Microsoft's Playwright is a wonderful tool for end-to-end -end testing, synthetic monitoring, or controlling headless browsers. But it is also a great tool for API testing. The last few days, I learned a few new things about API schema validation with Playwright, and this is what we will cover in this video. Let's go. I prepared a quick API spec TS file that includes three test cases that we will now fill with life to validate and test some APIs that I have running locally. And here we have them. The first API endpoint we want to test is a simple RESTful GET endpoint that is available on localhost 8000. We have to pass in an ID via a query parameter. And here we have the response coming from my locally running API. How could we test this with Playwright? When you write your Playwright tests, you will usually go here and you will request the page fixture to control the headless browsers. But if you want to make requests, you can also just go ahead and specify that you want to make requests using the provided request fixture. We can now go ahead and say that we want to make a get request. So get, I have the URL here in my clipboard. And if you wonder why we don't have to specify localhost 8000, I went ahead and defined a base URL in my Playwright config so that I don't have to specify localhost 8000 all the time. We can assign the response now to a variable and to access the request body, we can say body equals response.json. Here we go. In this example, we know exactly what we're dealing with. So we can check for a green status code first by calling await expect response to be okay. That's it. We can bring in expect from Playwright test, but we now can also check the response body. So let's go ahead and say expect body ID to be the ID that I have defined there on top. And we also know that we expect the name, so body name to be, here we go, check Lee. And that's pretty much it. If you now wonder why these assertions here don't need an await, not all assertions coming from Playwright expect are asynchronous and these to be calls are pretty much synchronous so we don't need to await them we can now go ahead and run this test case and this looks pretty green if our response body would now include more properties this here is a lot of typing though and what we can do instead is we can call expect body to match object and now we can pass in what we expect and we want to have the same id and name should be check lee and i think this is already a little bit nicer. Let's rerun the test and we are still green here. And while we're working here with exact values, this already starts to look a little bit like schema validation. Let's move on to the second API endpoint to see if we can make to match object a little bit more flexible. The API that I have running locally isn't only able to return resources, but also allows us to create new resources. When we make a post request to the same URL, we can specify a name, which will then be in the response body. And we also will have an ID here. So when we now make multiple requests, you see that the ID is constantly changing, whereas the name is always what we specify it to be. So how can we now validate this response body without knowing what we're dealing with? I already prepared the second test case here. We specify a name, we make the post request, then we get the response body. And then we again check that there will be a green status code. And in this case, it will be 201 created. To check the response body, again, we can now go ahead and we can say body to match object. And we already know the name that we expect as a response, but now check this out. For the ID property, we can go in and we can say ID expect any, and now we can pass it the string constructor, which is standard JavaScript. Let's see if this works. So when we now run our test case, we here have now a green test case. Let's see if it's really validating strings by passing in that we expect ID to be a number. Let's go. No, this is a failure. So this is good to go. But what can you pass to expect any? Expect any works for all the instances that are created from a constructor function, which isn't really helpful here for our API example, but you can also pass it the JavaScript primitive types, which are string, number, boolean, and a few others. So for simple API responses, expect any might do the trick to perform an API response schema validation. And I think this is already pretty cool, but for more complex examples, I found that expect any isn't doing the trick. And for real schema validation, we need to bring in some more tools. So let's look at the last example. 
Here we have an API endpoint at localhost 8000 slash complex. It's a simple GET request, but you see now when we make this request, first of all, it will always be a different ID. It will always be a different name. And this related people array here sometimes includes people, but sometimes it can also be none. So how could we validate this schema properly? Here we have the final example, the third one, which already makes a GET request to slash complex. We parse the body and we already check if the response status code will be a green one. And here we have the example schema that we're dealing with. The response includes an ID property of type string. There's a name property of type string. And then there's also this related people array, which then could include objects with ID of type string, name of type string, or here's the catch, it could also be null. For this more complex example, we need a proper schema validator. And when you look around, most tutorials out there recommend to use a JV, another JSON validator. I like to be the underdog though, and I prefer to use Zod because it's TypeScript first and I have good experience with it. But whatever you choose, any JSON validator should do the trick. As a first step, we have to define the schema that we want to validate against. And I would paste this because it's quite something. So let me just bring in the Zod library here. And these lines now define that we are expecting an object that includes an ID property of type string, name of type string, then there should be an array that again holds some objects with name string and ID string, or it can also be possible that it won't be an array so we can change these methods here and that related people could be null instead. And now we can go ahead and call schema.parse. So this is similar to JSON parse and we pass in the body of our response. If body is now not passing our schema validation, schema.parse will throw an exception. So as a last step, we can say expect, we can pass in a callback function here. We move that one in and we can say that this one should not throw an exception. And that's pretty much it. We can now run our test a couple of times. So let's do that. So doing once, doing twice, doing a third time. So this now looks good to me and we're validating the JSON response against a more complex schema. But whatever happens now, we are ready to tackle any JSON response. The only thing that bugs me now a little bit is this line here because I wouldn't want to have that in all my test cases. So make sure to subscribe for future videos because I will release a follow-up video showing you how you can implement custom assertions like to match schema in your Playwright projects. And with that, we made it to the end of this video here today. We implemented basic API validation. We used expect.any for simple schema validation using Playwright native methods. And then we also implemented the Zot schema JSON validation library to deal with more complex scenarios. As a last thing, if you are new here and wonder what's up with this raccoon and what we do at Checkly, we at Checkly enable you to take your existing Playwright code base and turn your end-to-end -end tests or your API tests into synthetic monitors running on a schedule from around the globe so that you can constantly check your apps and APIs. And if there are any issues in production, you can get timely alerts to be the first one to know when something is off. It's honestly pretty sweet if you enjoy knowing that everything is running correctly. And that's all I have for you today. If you have any comments or questions, drop them below and I will see you in a future video covering Playwright, Synthetic Monitoring and Checkly here on the Checkly YouTube channel. I will see you soon.